Welcome to Device Training for Hemo Laser Start Set, an extension of the Hilaris TL for intravenous laser blood irradiation. Please read the included operating manual carefully before using the device for the first time. The scope of delivery for the Hemo Laser Start Set includes the following. One user manual, one coupling adapter, which is later screwed to the laser, one patient adapter with long optical fiber, one holder to safely set down the laser during treatment, one piece tourniquet, one package Hemo Laser Disposable Optical Fibers, 20 units. The disposable optical fibers are also available in a package of 50 units and a bulk carton with 8 packages of 50 units each. Now we connect the laser to the Hemo laser set and prepare for laser blood irradiation. Take the coupling adapter and carefully screw it into the thread on the laser's beam control opening. Now place the laser in the holder, where it can be safely set down. This keeps it from accidentally rolling away on the table or falling to the floor, which could seriously damage the laser. Next, we connect the patient adapter to the laser device. Remove the black cover cap from the anterior end of the fiber. Then, insert the blue plug into the opening of the coupling adapter that is already mounted on the laser keeping it as straight as possible, and push until you feel it lock into place. Now the set is ready for intravenous laser blood irradiation on the patient. In addition to the device, also prepare hand disinfectant, disinfectant pads and the tourniquet, as well as a disposable optical fiber in its sterile packaging for the hemo laser application. A strip of adhesive tape is needed to secure the disposable optical fiber after insertion on the patient. Next, prepare the patient, ideally lying on the treatment table, and expose the arm where you want to introduce the cannula into the forearm vein. Take the tourniquet and tighten it on the patient's upper arm. Carefully disinfect your hands prior to contact with the patient and sterile components. Thoroughly disinfect the puncture site with a disinfectant pad. Remove the disposable optical fiber from the packaging. To do so, open the sterile packaging carefully. If the disposable optical fiber gets contaminated due to any circumstances whatsoever, a new one always has to be used. Remove the cover cap from the cannula and lay it aside. To avoid injuring the patient during insertion into the vein, be sure to loosen the connection between the cannula and butterfly prior to insertion and pull the butterfly with the fiber back by about 5 mm in the cannula. However, make sure you do not pull the optical fiber completely out of the cannula. After pulling the butterfly with the optical fiber back slightly, insert the cannula into the forearm vein at an angle, as flat as possible. The cannula is long. Inserting the cannula about one centimeter into the vein at an angle is sufficient. When the green plastic part of the cannula fills with blood, fully reconnect the cannula and the butterfly. In some cases, no blood collects in the indicator. To prevent the cannula from moving, sliding, or even being pulled out during therapy, attach it to the patient's forearm with two pieces of adhesive tape. Open the tourniquet on the patient's forearm and remove it. Now the patient adapter can be connected to the hemolaser optical fiber on the patient and the laser blood irradiation device can be put into operation. Attach the patient adapter to the patient's forearm so the patient is not bothered by any of the closures, loose enough so there is no congestion of blood but sufficiently tight so it cannot shift. Make sure the patient adapter is attached close enough to the hemolaser disposable optical fiber so the components can be loosely connected to each other 
without tension. Now, take the plug of the disposable optical fiber and insert it into the opening provided on the patient adapter until a click is heard. The system is now ready for laser blood irradiation. Start the laser with the timer setting of 30 minutes. Check again that your patient is doing well. The therapy now runs for 30 minutes with no need for further measures. Disinfectant, a sharps container, a swab, plaster and scissors should be ready at the end of hemolaser therapy. When the timer runs out, the laser turns off automatically and a triple signal tone is emitted. Turn the key to the off position and remove it when the therapy has been completed. Now take the scissors from the table and cut the fiber of the disposable optical fiber. Reusing it is prohibited. Loosen the tie strap on the patient adapter and remove it from the patient's forearm. Safely set it aside. Carefully disinfect your hands prior to contact with the puncture site on the patient. Now carefully remove the adhesive tape without moving or pulling out the cannula or fiber. Carefully pull the cannula out of the patient's forearm vein and promptly put pressure on the puncture site with the swab for at least two minutes. After removing the pressure bandage, apply a plaster to the puncture site. Check again that your patient is doing well. The patient can now be released from treatment. Now the individual components can be safely stored again in the packaging provided. Promptly dispose of the used cannula in a suitable container. Reusing the disposable optical fiber is not permitted under any circumstances, not even on the same patient. To prevent mix-ups, we therefore recommend cutting the fiber of the disposable optical fiber with scissors after the treatment. Pull the cut plug of the disposable optical fiber out of the patient adapter. It also has to be disposed of. Disconnect the connecting plug of the optical fiber on the patient adapter from the coupling adapter and replace the black cover cap. It has to be pulled out exactly straight to avoid damaging the coupling on the coupling adapter. Store the equipment safely in the packaging or in another safe place. Now we are going to briefly discuss the contraindications for hemolaser therapy. Patients taking blood thinning medications, please see our exact listing. Patients with active tumors or leukemia. Pregnant patients. Patients who have received phototoxic medications during the effective period of the medication. If you have further questions about handling and application, please contact the supplier or manufacturer. You will find contact information in the operating manual for the laser device.